Hey there, everyone. My name is Father Bullock. I'm the assistant at St. Pius X in Rock Island, Illinois. And uh, right now I'm currently in my home parish in Bloomington, Illinois. Maybe you remember a couple weekends ago, I was actually, I, I was not at the parish for the whole weekend. I didn't uh, assist at any of the masses. I didn't say any of the masses. Maybe you remember at a previous video, I told you that my family was supposed to have two weddings this summer, but because of COVID, uh, both of them were uh, re um, canceled. They're moved to later on in the year. So we decided to have a family get together anyway. And so I was just, I'm gone for the whole weekend because I'm with my family right now. And we've had a great time so far. We're gonna see them a little bit more and then I'll uh, take off back for Rock Island. So I thought I'd do today's video in my home parish. Now you might notice uh, I don't have a collar on. In my getting together to come down here to be with my family, I forgot to grab it. So I have clerics, just not my collar. If you remember another video we talked about enduring inconveniences. Uh, I'm enduring an inconvenience right now because I still wanted to shoot this video. I still wanted you to see my home parish. I'm going to do my best to actually let the camera uh, pan around a little bit just so you can, you can kind of see everything. Uh, but this is my home parish, Holy Trinity in Bloomington, Illinois. This is a different angle. Uh, the sanctuary is just right behind you over here. I wanted to show you something real quick. This pew right here, this pew. This pew, that's a pew that we sat in when I was growing up, every Sunday. That's a pew that we sat in for all my first communions, all confirmation, uh, every Sunday mass. It was in that pew that I sat with my dad. It was in that pew that I sat rolling my eyes, happened to be at church. It was in that pew that I was complaining in my head that uh, Mass was so boring. It was in that pew that I was uh, thinking to myself, could these priests get any older? I was thinking to myself, could these priests' homilies get any worse? It was that pew. A lot happened in that pew. That's my favorite pew in the whole church. I come in here from time to time just to pray, just to, to, to be revitalized in, in what's going on in my life, and that's the pew. It was that pew that I first started to think about the priesthood. It was that pew that I started to ponder fatherhood and what it might be like to be a spiritual father. It was in that pew that I had to have some tough conversations with God because I wanted to be a biological father and I thought that he was asking of something more from me. It was that pew. That pew holds a very important place in my life. Six, six pews in on the far right side. That was a pew that changed my life. As I said, that was my pew right over there. This is the sanctuary that I grew up looking at. Uh, as you can see that uh, there's a little bit of a, of a patio-like thing right here that didn't, didn't always used to be there. It's all, from what I remember, this is what it's always looked like. But before that, this was actually farther back and the sanctuary w was back in the, in, in the rounded part of there and this was still pews in here. As I said, this is the place where I first started to think about fatherhood. Uh, this is the first place I started thinking about both spiritual fatherhood and uh, biological fatherhood. Uh, this is the place where I started thinking about the priesthood. Today's actually my 32nd birthday. Uh, so if you want to put in the comment section below, happy birthday or an email. I'm not really looking for birthday uh, wishes, but, but I, I realize that some people will want to do that. So feel free. It'll be awesome to receive those. Uh, being 32 years old now, a lot of my friends who, who never became seminarians or at least never became priests are largely all married now. And a lot of them are starting to have kids or have a few kids. At my family's reception this, this, this weekend, most of my cousins are now married and a lot of them have kids. So fatherhood's on my mind in a different way than it was when I started seminary. It was fatherhood's on my mind in a different way than it was when I started when I was ordained a priest. Uh, I think of fatherhood very differently now, just even only five years into priesthood, that I did uh, when I was 19 years old starting seminary, when I was uh, 26 when I got ordained. Fatherhood. I thought we might just talk a little bit about fatherhood today. What is fatherhood? We can say fatherhood is having a family. We can say fatherhood is, is, is you know, fathering children. We can say fatherhood uh, is those who are leading others to something. Right, so if we see fatherhood as, as, as really just leading others to something great, right, a loving father is one who will bring others to something uh, great, something amazing, 
uh, we can talk about fatherhood just universally, right? Every man is called to be a father, not necessarily always biologically, although that's mostly how we think of it, right? When we think of, of, of our own fathers as flawed or as great as they are, right? I have a really, really good dad. He still had flaws, but he's a really good dad. I don't know about you. If you had a great dad or a really bad dad or an absentee dad, I, I, I don't know. I hope that your dad was present in your life, but we can talk of fatherhood. Fathers being leaders, not necessarily that they have to, to lead with an iron fist or with, with authority or forcefulness, but leaders, those who, 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 who can see something great for their family, and they're going to do their best to bring their family to that. To talk about fatherhood is really to talk about leaders. Let's talk about leadership just for a second. What is a leader? Right, a leader ultimately is just someone who has followers. A leader in its true sense is someone who can see a reality, a world that does not yet exist, and they're willing to tell and convince others that they can bring them to that new reality, that new world, and they can get them to follow them to that new reality. Sometimes a good leader fails at doing that perfectly. Sometimes a leader doesn't always know the next right step to make. Sometimes a leader can see what's good for others, but is struggling to help convince them that they can become that new thing, that new person, that new reality. Sometimes being a leader is actually very difficult. Sometimes being a dad, sometimes being a father is very, very difficult. We find in the scriptures that um, Jesus means for every man to be an image of Jesus himself. Every man is called to be an image of Jesus. Every woman is called to be an image of the church and of Mary. Again, it was in this church. It was actually just in this pew right up here, the first pew, that I learned how to, to serve at Mass. I was a sophomore in high school before I started to serve. Uh, most kids learn when they're in 6th si uh, or 7th grade. Uh, I didn't learn until I was in high school. I, I was a sophomore in high school the first time that I had the courage to stand up and say, I'd like to start serving Mass. And it actually had a deep impact in my life and a deep impact in my thoughts of the priesthood. So when I started to altar serve and I started to see the priest in a new way, I started to realize uh, what, what ultimately real leadership is and what real fatherhood is. One of service. What did Jesus do? What's the ultimate image that Jesus gives of us? Right? We hang it out on the churches. Right? It's him hanging on a cross. He desired to protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve his bride and those around him. Right? That's fatherhood. That's leadership. Again, I told you my dad is, a, is an excellent dad. A really excellent dad. I really do love my dad. I wanted to actually him to be in this video, but because of some scheduling things and whatnot, I, I was unable to make that happen. So I apologize for that. I hope to introduce you to him at some point. Uh, but again, I, I had this really awesome dad, this, this, this man who really desired to, to, to serve and help me and, and let me become my best and, and try to be a good leader. Again, I could, I could give some examples of how he failed at it or wasn't perfect at it, but that was his true desire. I, can, I could see it on his heart even as a, as a young boy. Fathers, in 2020, it's tough to be a good dad. It's tough to be a good man. It's tough to be a good leader. We're constantly being told uh, new definitions of what it is to be a man, of, 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 of how it's bad to be an old type of man, that, uh, that chivalry is meant to be dead, that we can't do those things anymore, that you're in fact sexist to do those things. I wish not to take on those issues and those topics right now, but fathers, we have to be real men. We have to be real leaders. To see in your family greatness and the opportunity for it, that's what real fatherhood is. To see in them the greatness that they have, the things that God has made them for, and being willing to push yourself to bring your family to that new level, that's fatherhood. I know that it could be the case that not every person, every man watching this video is a biological father. Obviously, I don't have any bi biological children. But I'm still called to be father. You still call me father. I have a responsibility to lead you to holiness. That really ultimately is the goal and, and, and is the, the, the responsibility of every father, biological or not, to lead others to holiness. Men in this difficult time, in these 
odd days, I want to encourage you to greatness. I want to encourage you to that, that, that idea you have in your head of that type of man that you want to be, that type of man that you used to dream that you'd become, you can become that man. You can become the man that you have always longed for because God put that longing on your heart. It's a good longing. Continue to strive to be that man. If you've made some mistakes in your past of being a good man, both with your family and your friends or whatever, or, or, or past sins or whatever, whatever it might be, those things are in the past and you've got to get past them. God has made you for greatness and he desires for you to lead others to greatness. Become that man. Wives, children, both biological or not, if you have a good man in your life, a good, a good father, a, a good leader, a good, a good just general uh, mentor, I want to encourage you to keep praying for that man. If he's failed you in, in, in the past, if he's not been always a great example, if, if, if he's not even in your life right now, I want you to double down on praying for him. Because it's not easy right now. It's not easy to be a man. not easy to be a leader. Uh, but we need good leaders. We good, need good men. We need good fathers. Let us continue to realize that God has made us for something awesome. God has made us to be in, be in heaven with him forever. We need good leaders. We need good fathers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you to ponder what your life is like and ways that we can get better. If you like this video and you want to see more of them, please subscribe to the channel. Please also uh, like the, the, this video or leave a comment in the section if you want to wish me happy birthday. Fine. Sounds awesome. I can't wait to, 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 wish, to, to thank you for it and wish you well wishes. Um, if there's other videos you want to see, I, I, again, I hope to to have a variety of types of videos in a, in a variety of types of places, uh, please let me know what you'd like to see, and, and I'm going to do my best to make those happen. I'm going to continue to pray for you. I hope you continue to pray for me. God bless you.